and welcome to Thrift Shop Biography. This is the one about Jamie Lynn Spears. Thank you for listening. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. So, I found the autobiography of Jamie Lynn Spears. I should ask you, like I do at the beginning of every podcast, what did you know about Jamie Lynn Spears before? Britney's sister. Yeah. Because I think her career's just really been in America, hasn't it? The stuff she's in on telly in there, we don't get it here. So. But you're a massive Britney fan. Yeah, I hope I'm a you Britney don't mind. Fan. <laughs> I am a Britney fan and proud. I've been to her every tour since she started. Well, just by default, you must know about Jamie. Yeah, but I don't know anything about her. Okay, I would that's never bother to Google her. I'm not interested in her at all. Just okay. to Britney. I don't know anything about her brother Brian either. <laughs> Do you? No. I still don't. <laughs> I only knew she had a brother called Brian through reading Jamie Lynn's Exactly, book. yeah. So that's how little I care about anyone okay. except Britney. Oh, that's interesting because I'd know zero about Jamie Lynn Spears. I just assumed Britney fans no. knew about her. Maybe okay. some do, but I don't. All right. Nothing. So we both came to this with a complete yeah. blank slate. Yeah. Well, we better get started then. Let's get then. started. So she was born... To make you happy. Hey. Hey. I know enough about Britney to know that's a Britney song. Yeah, that's a hilarious joke. <laughs> <laughs> so she calls herself an oops baby. Yeah. Because Brian... Is it all going to be Britney song? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because Brian and Britney... Oh, there's alliteration there. there Why is, is she not called Bramy Brim? <laughs> yeah. Well, oh my God, can you believe she's actually called her mum and dad? She's basically oh. called mum and dad. Oh my dad God, because her dad is called Jamie. Yeah, and her mum's called Lynn. I didn't know that her mum was called Lynn. Is that in this <laughs> How did book? you not piece this together? <laughs> no, because I thought it was weird that she was named after her dad. Right. Jamie, her mum's called Lynn, yes. so she's called Jamie Lynn. Is that in the book? Yes. <laughs> oh dear. She's Confession. called Dad Mum Spears. Dad Mum Spears. <laughs> so, Brittany, so when Jamie Lynn is born, like, Brittany and Brian are old, right? Yeah, Brian was 12 and Brittany was 9 and they didn't want another kid. It was an accident, but, mm. you know. And we should also say they they live with modest means, don't they? Yeah. They're not by They're any not means. They're not rich at all. Yeah. And the dad's drunk all the time. Well, one thing about this book, which kind of put me off initially... Jamie Lynn does not half repeat herself. I felt like she said her dad was drunk too much. Ah, uh, yeah. Because it sounds like he was drunk every day. Yeah, and he really tried to cover it up. He's an alcoholic. And it, her mum's a teacher. Basically, that's who they were. She was a teacher. He dabbles in lots of different businesses. Yeah, he does. To, but he's also like a, a welder and stuff mm. as well. He's not shy of a day's work, I have to say, for somebody who drinks a lot. He, <laughs> yeah. he is like a hard worker. Mm. Yeah, you're right. He did welding and he tried to open many businesses, basically. And his dad was really physically abusive to yeah. him. He had a really shit dad, so that's how he knows to be a dad. And when he was 14, his baby brother died and then his mother died. Do you know what? I'm very interested in what Jamie Lynn leaves out about her granddad and her grandmother. And I'm going to be really interested to see if Britney Spears talks about it in her book, because I think it explains a lot about Britney Spears, her sister and her dad, all of their mental health. Like Britney's been massively famous for 20 years, right? And Jamie Lynn's been there all along. And Britney's had highly publicised mental breakdowns. And Jamie Lynn in this book talks about her own mental struggles and their dad as well. The dad's side of the family has historical mental illness. And I've never, ever seen it addressed in public. It's almost like the Spears machine tried to shut it down. But Jamie Lynn's dad, Jamie, when he was 14, his mom had a baby, a little boy who died when it was young. His mom went to the grave of that little boy and shot herself. Jamie Lynn says the mum just died soon after. Well, that's true. She doesn't say she shot herself. Yeah. Why? Because they've decided not to talk about it. But in a book that Jamie Lynn is openly talking about her own mental health struggles, where she's referencing her sister's mental health, why is she not open enough to talk about uh, what happened to her gran? Very true. Because that poor grandmother also, she had a violent husband. I mean, that's a traumatic 
family behaviour that will travel down through mm. generations. And actually, I think it's the key to explain Could be the key. Brittany. So she knows this. I found it through a Google deep dive. Really? Yeah. And I could not find any mainstream newspaper articles in the last 20 years that even talk about it. Wow. It's so a it's been su- secret, but it has been outed at some point. Yeah. It's been suppressed by the family and it's, it, it would give the world a much greater understanding mm. of what's happened to Brittany and Jamie Lynn. Maybe they're worried about a backlash of family crazy people or something. I don't know. I just think it's worth... I, I'm really interested to see if Brittany talks about it in her book, right. and I bet she doesn't. Interesting, eh? Hey? Yeah, it's horrible, mm. poor people. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know that much about Brittany, really, apart from the odd documentary, but... She was really amazing at singing from when she was one of those little tiny girls, wasn't she? Yeah. So those ones you push forward at pageants and stuff and they're all... So she's born with Britney already at, at that place. Two years later, when Britney's 11, she goes into the Disney club thing. What's it called? Mouseketeers. Yeah. It was Justin, Christina, Britney... Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. They're all about 11. Yeah. So, I mean, not that it says exactly that, but we need to know that that's when Jamie Lynn's two. Right. That's how big her sister is. Yeah. And I don't think they ever really seem to push her in the same way at all. She's struggling behind going, hello. Yeah. Look at me. I'm going to be a clown. I'm going to prank about. I'm going to sing and make up some characters. And actually has to draw their attention to her rather than be pushed. It almost makes me wonder... That I think lots of young children have that extrovert streak and they put on shows for their family and sing and dance. But with Jamie Lynn growing up with her big sister already famous, yeah. she's kind of doing it in an environment where she sees that kind of behaviour. You can be just massively successful. Yeah. And, and plus, s- that's how you get attention. Definitely. Yeah, right. yeah. She has a really nice relationship with Britney at this point, though, it has to be said. And she says she almost sees Britney as a second mother. And she says, even though Britney's only 12 and Jamie Lynn is like two or three, she feels sometimes that Britney is a better mother mm. than Lynn, her own mother. But then I guess Lynn is really busy masterminding Britney's career. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just want to stress that all through their childhood, and especially Jamie Lynn's pre-teen years, her and Brittany are very, very close. I'd say for most of their lives, honestly. Yeah. Until it all went to pot. Yeah. So anyway, Brittany became a household name, and then there were security issues. That puts a massive strain on the family. And then the dad was drinking so much, Brittany actually said to the mum, if you leave dad, I'll buy you a house. Yes. Wow. And she did. Yes, she did. She actually did. And it's really weird, though, because the dad never goes away. But she's left him. (laughs) But he never goes away. Yeah, he's always there. And even when they divorce a couple of years later, they probably see as much of each other as they ever did. Yeah. Because it's the business. He's officially Britney's manager, isn't he? Sort of, yeah. No, she doesn't tell us everything, does she? I have to say, what's interesting in Jamie Lynn's book is that Britney is obviously a secondary character, but one that looms over oh, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, but she wouldn't be writing a book if she didn't have Britney as a sister. I mean, oh, I hate yeah. to say it, but she's got some work, but she isn't a genius. Jamie Lynn, I can't help but think she's okay. Oh, she's pretty, she can sing a bit, she can dance a bit, she can act a bit. So can 10,000 other yes. girls in Hollywood, California, etc. The Britney Spears connection certainly basically is why she's got the work door. yeah because yeah. there's nothing sp- mm, i don't want to say there's nothing i, special I about don't her, either but... it's really horrible to have to say it because i've got nothing against or anything but look if we just know it she knows it yeah. that's the sad part like, do you know what here's it's... the thing with jamie lynn you know she is pretty enough she is talented enough she can sing well enough i felt she does not have the drive or ambition no i don't either so actually, she got all these opportunities. She never really pushed, and she... no, yeah, she was obviously good in her TV jobs. We haven't even got there yet. No, I, know, <laughs> but I, I don't want to write her off and just say she was this plastic nobody because I don't believe she is. I actually think the career she wanted, the way she wanted to act and do her music was never a massive mainstream Mm. thing, but I think that's kind of what she was pushed into, and she didn't like it. Yeah, but seeing her big sister. 
absolutely go through that worldwide fame, but she was privy to the dark side of it. True. She probably doesn't want anything to do with it. it. Here's a fact. She says she got the job on TV and Nickelodeon. It was this show called All That. She says she got it from doing all these sketches on Britney's tour bus. They filmed behind the scenes film and you could see her doing these funny sketches and she got the job from that. But I have to say, I googled just to see if there was any differences and it says that she was a small part in Britney's film Crossroads. Oh, okay. She played young Britney. And it was from that that they cast her in the oh, really? thing, which would give Britney a bit more credit for boosting her up, wouldn't it? Right. Than her just playing, Saying being hilarious Falling around on characters. the tall bus. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. It, but she never mentions being in Crossroads. No. Doesn't even mention that she plays young Britney in a big film. It's weird, the things that she misses out. Yeah. I just wonder whether she obviously has just lived in her sister's shadow mm. her whole entire life. And it's just important to her that she just gets some credit. Because in this book, she does say about, oh, I was always creating characters and putting on sketches and a producer saw them. So in a way... She's really trying to make it look like it was her that did it and not Britney's hand-ups. Yeah, when hand you ups, think about... Hand-ups, yeah. <laughs> Offs? Yeah, yeah hand, le- leg-ups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you think about it, though, how old is Jamie Lynn at this point? Eight? Who's going to look at an eight-year-old doing funny voices and say, hey, let's give this girl a TV show? Mm. Oh, I don't want to run her down. I know. It's because she's Britney's sister. Let's let's just get over that. Anything she's had is because she's Britney's sister. And everyone's watching to see what happens to this little kid, who does look quite a lot like Britney when she's little as well. And I don't think that's a bad thing. She's obviously... It's not like she's crap at anything. She's she's quite confident. Yeah. She's a good singer, she's a good actress, and she's funny. So I don't think the fact that she's Britney's sister kind of negates anything she's capable of. Yes. Okay, that's... Yeah, all right, let's let's, let's try and get past it. (laughs) So she's on a sketch show on Nickelodeon. Yeah, she does three seasons of that, and she's a fan favourite. Hey, she says Austin Butler is in it. Yes, I did Google it. That's Elvis, right? Elvis! (laughs) So I had no idea that he was a child star. Oh, I did, because, yeah, I watched a lot on him when that Elvis film oh, came out. Oh, really? Yeah. I needed to know who this Did he talk like was. Elvis when he was eight no, years old? No, he did old. not. <laughs> he, as soon as he became Elvis in that film, he suddenly turned into Elvis, didn't he? Oh, I saw the trailer of his new film this week, which looks amazing, Is he by being the way. Elvis? It's like the Hells Angels. He's totally Elvis. Oh, my God. It's like he's become Elvis. Yeah, he doesn't want to go back to who he I was mean, before. that's kind of borderline insanity. It is a little it. bit, yes. Yeah. I think so. OK, moving on. Yes. <laughs> But, um, yeah, he was in it. It's amazing how many of these famous people have been in this, doing this job since they were yeah. very young, including all the greats like Fred Astaire, Charlie Chaplin. You know, they start yeah. young. They do. We've been doing this podcast since we were six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so they had loads of guest groups on that show, all that. Like the Spice Girls, Destiny Child, Justin and Brittany. Oh, sorts of... well, I have to say, yeah. I was surprised that Jamie Lynn loved the relationship between Britney and Justin Timberlake, which kind of validated their relationship to me, actually, because I always thought it was just this showbiz relationship where they were kind of pushed together. But it seems very genuine. Yeah. And the fact that Jamie Lynn says, you know, because her mum and dad were just so chaotic and dad was drunk and violent... Britney and Justin was Jamie Lynn's first experience of a real loving, stable relationship. Mm, I know, it's really nice. Really nice. It really changed my opinion of that relationship. I, th- I think it would have really levelled Britney at the time. I was really aware of that when they... Because I'm older than her, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not like I was her age and I was a fan. I shouldn't have even been her fan. <laughs> and, um, yeah, when they split up... She mentions when they split up and, um, you know, Britney flew to Vegas and went completely off the rails and then got married. And, yeah. But it was very upsetting for the whole family because they, as a family, had to just run around and try and protect her. There's a lot of that going on. Jamie Lynn is... Getting So she's been on Nickelodeon, but she's also getting a couple of adverts and stuff for Pepsi and Clorox. So she is getting mm. work. She is. And she said outside of all that TV stuff, she had a really normal life. She was about 14. She had her first kiss. She had normal friends. They went to the cinema and just did normal things. She yeah. wasn't too famous at all. She always talks about going back to Louisiana, just hanging out with her mates and stuff. Yeah. I think the reason that she didn't become a massive 
star, which arguably she could have done, is because it wasn't as important to her because she really loved going home and having anonymity and just hanging out with her friends. If you want to be a world famous pop star, you don't have time to do that. No. Yeah, yeah she's, she's pretty like homely, isn't she? Yeah, and also just doing a bit of TV. And the next thing she got, 2005, so she was 14 when she got Nickelodeon's Zoe 101. But Zoe 101. They, they actually built that around her on purpose. It was a vehicle. Hmm. For her. And it was very successful, right? Very successful. So I'm assuming by this, Nickelodeon is a kid's channel, right? And Britney's already been famous for a few years at this point. So there's a whole generation of kids who are discovering Zoe 101, who Jamie Lynn will be their first point of access to the Spears family. And they will be a big fan of Jamie Lynn and then discover first. she has a sister called yeah. Britney. Yeah, right? they might not even care. Yeah. Yeah. So Jamie Lynn is then undeniably a star in her own she right. She really is, yeah. actually, but within kids' TV, so it's yeah. a, just a different genre. Yeah. And she was a, a real favourite. She was nominated for Best Team, won a lot of times. All the years it was on. How many years was that? A few. It's not a few. Three, it's three just, seasons. Was it? Yeah. And it's just been revived this year. Zoe yeah. 102. 2023. Oh. It's 2024. <laughs> I thought Zoe 102. No, it's 2024. In 2023. That's the year. Yeah. <laughs> Zoe 2023. Yeah. Not to make this about Britney, but Jamie Lynn does talk about her. Yeah. What she'll do, she'll talk about her own career. Yeah. And then in about two or three lines, she'll say, I saw my sister. She has debilitating exhaustion. Yeah. So as all this is going on and she's getting her own job and building her own success, she is constantly seeing how her sister's workload, her tours, her fame, media yeah. intrusion is basically ruining oh, her. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's pretty brutal. You know, I've been bigging up Jamie Lynn mm. a lot in her own right. Yeah. I've got a bit of a bone to pick with her. Yeah. She keeps getting these dogs and then... Oh, they're they... a bit much or she doesn't have time for them. So she gives them away. Mm. Bad behaviour, that. Bad behaviour, Jamie Lynn. You get a dog, you commit to it or you don't have one. You're right. So Lynn, sorry, mm -hmm. Jamie's mm -hmm. a dad, Lynn's a mum, mm -hmm. Jamie Lynn is who we're talking about. Yeah. Lynn was beating up. Jamie Lynn, with a beaded purse at one point. Like, her mum is also beginning to lose the plot at yeah. points. Yes. What's that about, then? Because she doesn't really she say... drinking too? No, I imagine, because Jamie Lynn says, tells us her dad is an alcoholic every given opportunity, I think if her mum was, she'd also tell us, and she doesn't. Mm, that's I, true. I just wonder whether it's just literally the stress of the Britney machine mm. gets to everyone in the end. Probably to... does. Yeah, in a nutshell, what she went through after... She broke up with Justin, flew to Vegas with some old mates from home. I mean, she, yeah. you know, they still try and stay normal. One yeah. of them's this bloke, Jason Alexander, who was always trouble. And they got married in Vegas. The last thing Jamie Lynn had said to her sister was, don't marry him in Vegas. <laughs> and then they did. Wow. 24 hours later, the whole family gathered around, got the marriage annulled. And then really soon after that, she met... Kevin Federline, who was a dancer on her tour, when they got together, I think his wife was pregnant. Yeah, she and was. I think they already had another kid. Yeah. Then that she she doesn't mention that. I just happen to know. Yeah, we know that. And then he was really controlling, and it was really nuts. So they they ended up divorcing, and then this bloke Sam took over, and I think Sam he... Lufty. Mm. He's trouble. I know a really lot about trouble. Sam. Actually, thinking about it, I have more Jamie Lynn knowledge than I know. You're right. Because Courtney Love, yeah. years ago, before any of us were talking about the conservative ship or anything, was publicly saying that she was friends with Jamie Lynn Spears, which is weird, right? Wow. And she was saying things that I shouldn't repeat on this podcast about how the dad treated Jamie Lynn and Britney and there was soon to be a massive court case. Ooh. And so Courtney Love was speaking out about it. Now, I believe Courtney Love because 20 years ago she was talking out about Harvey Weinstein when nobody right else was that. and she was right. Anyway, I thought it was such an odd connection. Turns out Courtney Love was managed by Sam Lufty at the same time that Britney Spears was. And that's what the connection is. Yeah. And he's a controlling, absolute mentalist. He's a pathological and manipulative man, she yeah. said. And she dismissed all the staff. She he barred the family. All the staff. He did, sorry. He switched he did. in the entourage. He did to, it. Yeah. yeah, barred the family and made drugs readily available to Britney. And they eventually got him out, but he's the beginning of the real damage he to her. He was really sowing seeds of distrust yeah. in Britney, and he was telling her that everyone was against her, how you can't trust yeah. anyone. So if you're mentally vulnerable anyway, that yeah. was probably just 
ruined her brain. And also, here's something. I Look, we're talking about Britney, but it's important in Jamie Lynn's story. This really shocked me because we lived through things in real time. When Britney went to Las Vegas and married that guy for 24 mm. hours, the same year she married Kevin Federline. Mm. A year later, she had her first son. A year later, she had her second son. Plus, also, we know, because Jamie Lynn's already told us, she has debilitating exhaustion. And also, it's very shortly after this... And Jamie Lynn is only 12 years old. Let's not forget that she is a young girl within this chaotic mental... Around that time, 2003. 12, yeah. Yeah. Blimey. But she says that Britney is becoming paranoid and erratic. Mm. Of course, because... And there's uh, all these drugs as well. You yeah. can see it happen to her. I totally remember. And she says that Britney came and took a kitchen knife, grabbed Jamie Lynn locked themselves in the bedroom and just started saying, I'm scared, I'm really, really scared. Don't worry, nobody's going to hurt you. And as that's going on, I mean, that's clearly somebody who's struggling. That's also at the same time she's getting married and having babies mm. in such a short period of time. Mm. Oh, my word, fame is a terrible thing to happen to anyone. <sighs> it is, especially if you can't trust your own parents. Uh, and look, Jamie Lynn is just a young girl in all of yeah. this. Poor thing. And around this time, okay, so she's 14. Her first boyfriend's Casper, she has it yeah. from 14. And he's from home. So he's another one who's just a normal person yeah. from her childhood, from school. At that same age she gets, she's in the, all that TV show. She says he comes and visits as often as possible. She goes home as often. And sometimes he guest appears on the show just so he can be around at her. Their relationship lasts for two years but it was so hard because it was long distance that they finally decided to split up. And seven weeks after that, she realised she was pregnant. She couldn't believe it. Her friend says, might you be pregnant? Of course not. No way. It's that classic, oh, wow, it's yeah. hell. And then you think, oh, my God, I've got to tell my parents her mum's really Catholic. Oh, God. It's See, I'm realising now that I did know other things about Jamie Lynn, like I did know actually that she'd had a baby at the age of 60. I did know that too. Which really surprised me when I heard that at the time. It was at the time, it was shocking to us, but we didn't really know much about her. But in America, the news was front page, massive, humongous news, because I guess her character to American kids was really innocent and was yeah. a real role model. Wow. And there was something saying that, they were trying to glamorise teenage pregnancy or she was trying to make it seem cool. And she wasn't at all. She didn't bloody mean to get pregnant. Her parents were trying to make her have an abortion and she just couldn't do it. Mm. So it's not like she wanted any of that. And then the press, of course, absolutely annihilated her. It's really bad calling her a slag. She wasn't a slag at all. It was her first love. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, what she is going through at every stage of her young life, it's awful, really, isn't it? Is it is, really, yeah, it is. Because of all of that, she really does have her head screwed on, actually. Yeah, she does. She's, it's the most biography where somebody's come across as just an ordinary person, yeah. not a performer, not an anything. At this point, when she has this baby at 16, she takes five years off. She just wants to be a mum. It's like she doesn't really want any of this. She just fell into it. So i tell you one thing which I th think is really telling in this whole story. When she's 16 and she's pregnant, she serves her mum with emancipation papers. Yeah, right. That is such an extraordinary thing to do. And that can only be because she's seen the control that her mum and dad have over her big sister. Yeah, it says a lot about what they're like yeah. as controlling people. And also, that's amazing for a 16-year-old girl to have that clarity yeah. of she, mind. She's and... had quite a life up to now. I mean, she's always touring on the tour bus with Britney yeah. from even at being a little kid. And she's yeah. in shows. She's seen an adult world right up to 16. Yep. But hey, basically, she's trying to get out of a conservatorship at 16, if you want to call it that. Yeah. From the same people. Yes. Do you know what, later on in the book... Because I do think being pregnant at 16 is so, well, it is, of course, it's a life changing decision. Doubly so when actually you have a career in entertainment yeah. that's going really well. Getting pregnant and deciding to keep the baby 
was her form of saying, hey, I am in control of my life. Yeah. You might want me to have an abortion to save my career. I think at that point, it was the only definite way she had of staying in control. Of keeping something for herself, yeah. yeah. And they were trying to make her get rid of Casper, who was obviously horrified as well. And she said, I didn't want to hear it then. So she actually moved in with him and got a house and they tried to bring up a kid together. They eventually split up. And the parents were right, but they were trying to do a Britney on her, weren't yeah, they? Yeah. Annul the hats, get rid of the hats, hide that, clean that up. We're a business. Actually, no, I'm not a business, I'm a person, and I'm going to do this. Yeah, you're she right. She really tried with Casper, didn't she? Like, he let her down so many yeah. times. He was, I think she even went to the hospital for some reason, and she got given painkillers. And she said when she got home, he, he took them. Yeah, yeah. Because he was heavily into drugs and stuff. And she was saying, no, you have a baby now, you've got to step up. And then I kind of think, you know, he was a kid as well. He probably didn't want to be a dad. Oh, he didn't want to be a dad. And they just split up as well. Yeah, it's all a horrible mess. But she, to her credit, she really, really tried to make that work. Mm -hmm. And even when they weren't together, she gave Casper access to the kid up until the point where she felt it wasn't safe to take the yeah, kid to him he was anymore. Going off the rails, wasn't and then he? she was granted sole custody. Yeah, I mean she's seventeen at this point. She yeah. really does have her head screwed. I yeah. like her a lot, actually. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you're right. She did all that, and then she met a really nice bloke called Jamie. He was a businessman, and he was totally nice and level-headed. Yeah. And he even tolerated that she tried again to get back with Casper because she really believed parents should stay together. And this bloke, it was in the air that they were in love with each other, but. He wanted to do the right thing. I think they were sort of not together for about two years or yeah. more. And then eventually Casper was, <laughs> he moved back in with her, wormed his way back in and then went home for a visit and was all over Facebook partying with other girls. Yeah. Twat. Oh, he had Social more than media. enough chances. And do you know what? Jamie Lynn says one of the most humiliating experiences of her life was when she gave him endless chances and then it was front page news one of the girls he had slept with mm. did a kiss and tell, mm. and it was on the front page. She just felt like an idiot at that point, of course. Mm. Anyway, she meets this lovely yeah. new and guy. And she's still with him to this day. She's still with him to this so day. So she's with her second boyfriend. It's all over the papers that she's a slag. Yeah. She's only been with two blokes. Yeah. She's, I mean, just not right. Mm -hmm. He's a very nice person. He's really nice and he accepts her. We've not named her kid is called Maddie. He totally accepts her as his own. Yeah. Do you know what? I kind of thought it was too good to be true at the beginning. She does tell us later he's actually 10 years older than her. And I normally take a negative view on these relationships where the girl is 17 and the guy is 27. But in this case, I understand how it works. And I also understand how Jamie Lynn is 17 going on 30 That's anyway. That's right. I don't think she would have found anyone at the age of 18, 19 with the emotional capability to understand yeah. what she's been through. She needed someone 10 years older. Look, she got somebody 10 years older and they're still together yeah. today. So. And they had another kid. Yeah. A happy family. <laughs> she moved to Nashville around this time. She decided she was going to get into music and someone said to her, well, what sort of music do you want to be? Country. Country's her thing. And also it's different from pop. Isn't it? So it's... I think it was a really good move, actually. I do, too. But actually, I mean, she she went really started at the bottom. She got in with writers. Yeah. She played at small venues. Yeah. She really did it the right way, yes, the very Nashville did. way. Yeah. But then she said she was crippled with anxiety. She actually couldn't perform. She just couldn't do it. She said it was partly because they were trying to lead her in the wrong direction yeah. and do her hair and make her into this person she wasn't. She would have had offers from major labels, undoubtedly, mm. right? And I totally loved it that she went off to Nashville, did songwriting showcases and stuff and really got it and actually was learnt to tell her own story through her music. And yeah, she began to crumble a bit. And she says later in the book, it's because they tried to steer it into their idea of her yeah. rather than what she actually wanted to say. And there's a couple of, um, well, she basically had a breakdown. I think she did, really. But I don't think that's just because of the music and no, stage, right? No, it's everything. It's because of everything. Yeah, and that's the time when she was in Nashville that that bloody bloke Casper came and lived with her again and then was off on social media cheating yeah. on her and blah, blah, blah. So, she, yeah, yeah, she wasn't in a great place at the same time. Oh, she'd been trying to do music for five years. 
I did listen to one of her songs, her first single. It was lovely. It's really, really nice. Yeah, I also looked at the statistics. It didn't go anywhere. No, I know it she didn't did. it go wasn't anywhere. Successful. But do you know why that is? It's because she created her own little independent label to release her music. Yeah, I think it's it's a big misunderstanding that it's good music that gets to the top of the charts. The music that gets to the top of the charts are the ones that are released by the major labels who pump millions of pounds into the promotion and they pay to get them on the radio. They pay to get them on the TV. And do you know what? These days they pay to get them on Spotify and Spotify playlists. If you're a tiny little independent label coming out of Nashville, you've got no hope of getting heard. So it just doesn't sell. It doesn't mean it's not good. That's true. Do you know that she did a duet on one of Britney's albums? No. Yeah. It starts, like, <laughs> I've laughed at it so many times. It starts, you, you, <laughs> literally. It, there's a little bit of incidental music in the background and then both of them go, one each, you. <laughs> and it, the song is chilling with you. I'm chilling with you. But it starts by just the you. <laughs> They're unbelievably terrible. And I love Britney, but that is just terrible. Well, that's a shame. But it's, it's an all right, it's not the best song. But there you go. She doesn't even mention that. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't mention that. Right, that she had a duet on yeah. her sister's album. Or she was on her sister's film. She is not mentioning those legs up she's had. And I know what you're saying, why? But then how can we trust the oh. truth in this book if you're not telling the whole truth? Because she had room to tell us the whole truth because this book is really short. short. Uh, another thing, I know a lot of these celebrity books are written with a ghostwriter. Mm. Jamie Lynch should get her money back. I, I think it's really badly do written. You? Yeah, I do. Are you saying it was written with a ghostwriter? The only excuse for this book being this bad is if Jamie Lynn wrote it herself, and if she did, then I forgive her, because it's really hard to write a book. Yeah, it's like a magazine article. Yeah. Actually, it isn't. But then I kind of thought, else. then perhaps it's tailored to her fan base. Could be for the kids, but then her fan base would know she's in this film or did a duet with Britney. Yeah. Or... It's weird to miss it out. I reckon somebody's cancelled her to go, let's make the narrative just about you. <laughs> but I do, I 100% get that yeah. she needs to reclaim herself. I do I too. Get it. But then say it. Yeah. But then actually talk about that. Yeah. Talk about the in depth feelings you have about what it's actually like to grow up under someone's shadow and how you actually feel. She doesn't get into that. Mind you, she slags her off for quite a lot near the end. She does. Oh, poor, did you poor. take that as her slagging her off? Yeah, I did, actually. Let's get... Hang on. Right, let's, let's get, go, yeah, let's get the facts out there. Oh, can I just say something yes. about... She married Jamie in 2014, yeah. right? Now, this relationship does sound too good to be true, and I, do, I might not put this in the podcast. Well, you've got three Jamies as well. That's a mistake. Oh, my God, so she's Jamie. <laughs> her dad's Jamie. She's Jamie Lynn, she and her husband Jamie. is now Jamie. Louisiana for you. <laughs> When they got married, yeah. this is the only thing that makes me feel really icky about this. When they got married, her daughter, who was six oh, or seven at this point. The proposal. No, what no. about the proposal? Oh, he proposed he to proposed the daughter, to daughter as daughter well. the daughter first. And then when they got married, the daughter was a mini bride. <laughs> it's like, no. Oh, you took that differently from me. I thought it was really sweet because he got down and said, would you let me marry your mum? Because it's like, that's he doesn't want to leave her out no, so I he get that. The first and no, I get that. But then don't dress your daughter up as a bride at the wedding because that's make her feel weird. Included. No, she can be a bridesmaid like every other daughter to every other woman who ever got married. She's not the bride. The husband is not marrying the six year old daughter. He's marrying the mother. The six year old girl is a child. She is a bridesmaid. She's not a mini bride. It's weird. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're not actually wrong. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> There's a whole chapter in this book called The Sacrifice of Stardom. And I think that is key to the whole Britney situation and also the key to why Jamie Lynn did not pursue a bigger entertainment career, which she could have had. She saw, well, she sacrificed stuff herself. Her whole family sacrificed themselves. I know they sort it out in the beginning. I don't think any. Yeah, what do you get for it? You got shit loads of money. But the rest of it, Outside money, what have you got? Yeah. A terrible mess. It's that thing, like Matthew Perry said in his autobiography, and then somebody else we've read after, I can't yeah. remember. Um, just be careful what you wish for. Yeah. And people always think that fame is going to answer all their problems, and it doesn't. No, you, you're just you stuck in a massive problem. house with yeah. the same problems. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad fame eluded me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
right. She's working on her music career for eight years, five years. When you actually look at it, there's like one EP. You can't yeah. quite work out where the five years went. But then, so when Maddie's eight years old, there's a massive accident which changed the rest of her life, basically, it seems. Well, she's lucky to be alive. Oh, she she almost died and then had a second chance. So that's the second chance you live by. You lost your daughter and then she got reborn and then you change your life because of it. That's what it felt to me, like yeah. what happened. That's how big a deal it was, what happened. Do you want to tell us anything about the accident? Oh, shall I? All right, I'll tell you. All right, she's driving around. It sounds like a little tractory thing or something around the yard. I got it. There was like a quad bike. Quad bikes, that's what I mean. OK. <laughs> <laughs> mini, well, mini, quad mini bi- tractory yeah, thing. quad bikes yeah. are little tractors. Yeah, Sorry, you. continue. Yeah. <laughs> and she was only 100 yards away from Jamie Lynn and Jamie. And uh, she just took a sudden sharp turn and went sploosh into the pond and so they ran over. I mean, you know, luckily they were very close and saw it happen. But when they got there, she's trapped. Partly, I think she had a seatbelt on. She's trapped partly by the netting. It's not clear exactly what happened, why she was trapped. They were hysterically trying to get her out. I think Jamie had been on the phone when it happened. So he ran over because afterwards he had a recording of the whole thing. They all couldn't pull her out. They couldn't pull her out because it's horrendous. It's just horrendous. And she was actually under the water for six and a half minutes. Their assistant person was with them who immediately phoned the ambulance. They happened to be positioned so close they were there within two minutes. If that hadn't fallen into place there, there's no way she'd be alive. And they got her out, but she was in a coma. And they just just basically went through hell between her being in a coma and then coming out and having no memory and her brain possibly damaged to becoming a normal kid again. They went through hell, but they did find Jesus there. They really, really came out with a big Jesus feeling god had gotten through it god had gotten through it you know i don't know why god put their daughter underwater for six minutes in the first place but he moves in mysterious ways he does but it's very nice of him to get her out again so yeah yeah yeah, you're right they never blame him they only ever thank him he's a lucky bugger (laughs) but anyway yeah they did they really really thought that's what had happened they prayed a lot she just said after that she realized that she didn't care about any of her career. She didn't care if she acted or sang or anything. She cared about being a mother and bringing Mm. her kids up. Mm. And so I think she seems to pretty much have stopped stuff. I mean, that was 2017, obviously. A couple of years later, COVID happened, and now here we are. And they're reviving Zoe 102.2023. Yeah. The thing about COVID, Mm. I was really surprised to find out they all lived together during lockdown. And the fact that Brittany basically attacked Jamie Lynn to the point where little Maddie was pulling her off. And her mum came along and said to Jamie Lynn, oh, don't go upsetting your sister. Now, this is something that Jamie Lynn has been told her entire life. Everything Jamie Lynn done in her career was okay as long as it towed the Britney line, as long as it was good for the whole... Because that's the cash cow. Yeah. Really? We haven't talked about the conservatorship and I feel we need to because Jamie Lynn has been really demonised in the whole... She has, and she talks a lot about it near the end of this book. Do you believe what she says? I'm not sure. I think it's all legally verifiable, so I yeah, believe probably. her. I don't see how she could yeah, lie about I it. I only hesitated then because we were talking about how much she's missed out, so it makes you wonder. <laughs> but, um, OK, so when did the Conservatorship came in? It came in when that Sam yeah. was ruining her life. About and 2007. She, she actually needed help. Yeah. She needed somebody to take control. The family needed in. They needed to get her off the drugs. But they also needed control of her finances. Because as far as I'm concerned, they actually controlled her finances, put her on an allowance, and have taken all her profits, which are huge. I've seen her tours whilst all this has been going on, because I don't ever want to not be there in case she thinks her fans don't care. <laughs> but all I'm doing is paying her dad some money. It yeah. kind of feels like that. Because the poor woman, you see her, she's just going through the motions. She moves when she's supposed to. She dances. She mimes correctly. She does the costume changes. She doesn't look happy. She's not singing live anymore. She's just, yeah, she's just, just going through the motions. She had a breakdown and she doesn't ever seem to have recovered her confidence. I see how the conservatorship was necessary at Mm. one point in time because she was not well. Mm. This new manager came in who nobody liked but somehow had ingratiated himself to Brittany. Mm. I understand why the family said, no, we need to protect 
the money we need to protect Britain. I, I understand how, why it was put in place. Me too. But they're also protecting their own financial interests yeah, as course. well. Well, arguably, they worked hard to get Britney started. Yeah, I know. I don't like this whole thing. We've read like Andre Agassi. We've read other people where actually the quest for famous success is, does not belong with the individual. It belongs with their parents. I feel mm. very uneasy about it. Yeah, I feel a little bit like they Colonel Tom Parker to her. You know, because sending her out on tour, I heard her ranting about the conservatorship when she went to court and actually got to speak out. And it does seem that if they're saying she's mentally unstable and she's physically unstable and she needs help, why are you sending her out on tour? Yeah, if you're absolutely. saying she isn't capable of looking after herself, how is she capable of touring? Because you want the money. Mm-hmm. So it seems a bit Colonel Tom Parker. And I don't... What's she accusing her sister of? Of knowing all about it and not helping her? No, she's actually... The thing is, is that she's not accusing... She's never accused her sister of anything. But what was not clear when she made a statement, she said, my family. And so Jamie Lynn, by default, is her family. So everybody really piled on Jamie Lynn when that all came out. Why didn't you help her? Now, Jamie Lynn tells us what happened. She says that she had no part of the conservatorship. She was not a signatory. She didn't want to be because she didn't want to upset her relationship with her sister, Brittany. The only legal arrangement they had, Brittany Spears went to Jamie Lynn and said, in my will, will you be the guardian to my boys if anything should happen to me? And Jamie, I don't know whether she did sign it initially, but anyway, a few months later... She went back on that decision and she said, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to have any complications in our relationship. I just want to be your sister. I think all of that, I believe her when she says that, because that is legal documentation. If you wanted to, you could find that and work out whether she's lying or not. So I totally believe that she is not part of the conservatorship. But here's the kicker. As much as she loves Britney and supports her... She's now kind of mended her relationship with her parents. So she also says that she loves and supports. I think this is a whole faith Jesus thing. Right. Where you forgive people. So she's kind of caught between the two, really, because she wants to support Britney, but also she won't say anything bad about her Mm. parents. And I think perhaps people are saying to her, you really need to pick a side. Mm. The one thing that Jamie Lynn does say towards the end of this book is that Britney did send her a text saying... I love you. I'm really sorry I got angry with you. I know I'm your big sister, but I need you so much more than you need me. And then Jamie Lynn says, I hope one day Britney releases this to the public. She goes, because I can tell you, but you might not believe me. And she said, but she did send that. So I know that my relationship with my sister is all right. Jamie Lynn does not mention the defining moment of Britney's breakdown, which is a shaven head. Yeah. She doesn't mention the half of it. Do you know something... That's not her story, though. Something that blew my mind five years ago, they did a survey amongst millennials. What's a defining moment of your lifetime? Number one is obviously 9-11. Yeah. Number two is Obama becoming president. Number three, Britney shaving her head. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. It was a worldwide... (laughs) But do you know what? We were living together at the time. And do you know what? I remember... That was the first thing, because the internet was just kind of yeah. really... Yeah. We were beginning to get it in our homes. It was, it was epic. The, it was the first major celebrity news story that we saw unfolding in real I time. I suppose that's true. And I think that's why it stuck with people. Those bastards. What journalists do to grind these people down is despicable. It's reprehensible. It's weird. If anyone's blaming or even relating Jamie Lynn to it being any of that being her fault, I never would have occurred to me. To me, the enemy's the dad and probably the mum a bit, but mostly the dad. He just seems like an asshole. When you, you see a documentary, whenever he's in the room, it's just no good. It's Oh, I have no concept good. of him in that way. Oh, right. Oh, OK. OK. Because mm. obviously Jamie Lynn, and I'm only reading her version of events, towards the end of the book, kind of, she's made her peace. She's let her dad back into yeah. her life. Part of the cons- Now, here's the thing. When the conservatorship was set up, one of the conditions is that Brittany had to take a regular monthly drink and drugs test. And her dad agreed to do it with her in support of Brittany. And Jamie Lynn said as long as her dad continued to take the sobriety test, he could be in her life and her children's lives. So that's how she's kind of made her. Okay, She kind of says as long as her dad kind of stays sober, then he's in. Probably didn't last 
the week past the publication of this book, though. I don't trust him. Really? OK. I don't know anything about him. Nor do I, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a baddie. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either, right? <laughs> what we conclude from reading this book is she's given us a very nice sprinkling of information to get a very vague idea of some of the stuff of her life and probably to clear up a few things if you lived in America that were in the press and she's giving her point of view. Uh, but for us here, we're still a bit in the dark <laughs> and we're waiting for Britney's book to come out. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. And also, this book is called Things I Should Have Said. Yeah. She doesn't really say anything. No. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Thrift Shop Biography. We love making this podcast and we're absolutely thrilled that so many of you are already listening. Um, we're new to this and you could really help us out by leaving us a review somewhere, wherever you listen to this podcast. And if you could share us, tell your friends about us or drop some links on social media. We have a Facebook page called Thrift Shop Biography. So make sure you come over there to hear about the episodes first and what else we're up to. OK, see you next week. And if you're new here, there are loads more episodes now to go and listen in the back catalogue. So make sure you go and enjoy them. OK, thank you very much. Bye.